Hey everyone, my name is Trevor Daly and today I'm going to show you why I think you should be importing your files into Lightroom as DNGs and not the camera raw files. Stay tuned. All right guys, so as I said, I think it's important to import your files as DNGs in Lightroom as opposed to the camera raws and here's why. In fact, first, before we even do that, let's actually go into Lightroom and let's see how to do it. So if you go into Lightroom and you go to your import dialog box, so where you're gonna basically import those images into Lightroom, you're gonna see that it gives you the option to copy as DNG or just copy. Now copy is just moving those files you know, from your card onto the computer, copying them over, right? So they're gonna come over as camera raw files. However, the option I would encourage you to check out is copy as DNG. Now DNG stands for digital negative. It is basically the Adobe, uh, Adobe version of a raw file. It has all the benefits of raw, it allows you to change the white balance, all, all that, basically everything you can do with a raw file, you can do with Adobe DNG. The nice part is, is they're about 10 to 15% smaller, but you don't lose any quality. So you're saving space, especially if you're shooting hundreds of thousands of images a year. But even more than that, here's what I really like about DNG files. And there's other benefits as well, of course, but here's what I really like. The XM, or excuse me, the camera raw files, when you import them into Lightroom, Lightroom creates, let's open this up here. Lightroom creates not only, so basically when I import it, I have a CR2, this is the Canon RAW file. If I scroll up, I'll see my, my uh, second photographer, they have NEF, this is, means they shot with a Nikon, so that's the Nikon RAW file, Sony is ARW, okay? But what Lightroom's gonna do as well, it's gonna create these files, these XMP files. And XMP is basically a sidecar or a partner file to your camera RAW file. It includes all the instructions, the data that you're doing in Lightroom to make the changes to that file. So for example, if I make you know exposure changes, contrast changes, et cetera, it's all recorded in this XMP file. Now what happens if I accidentally delete those? Or let's just say I'm looking at this and I go, oh, you know what, I need to move my raw files over into another folder and I move them over and I don't include those XMPs. Well, then Lightroom doesn't know where those instructions are and you might have just lost all your edits. But even more so, it's just kind of pesky having all these extra files, right? I mean, it's just, it's basically double the amount of files that I need in my folder. So what I love about DNGs is that they don't have XMPs. The instructions are built and recorded right into the DNG file, the digital negative. So it makes a lot of sense. Now, Adobe built this to make it easier for us and the software to, to be able to manage these raw files. And so why not use it? Take advantage of it. Like I said, you get you know more storage because it's it's a little less you know size wise, and you get the convenience of having those XMP or the instructions built right into it. What's nice about that as well is let's just say you have to send those raw files off to somebody. Maybe maybe the client asks for a few raw files or what have you, and you and you decide to send it over to them. Well, guess what? Those edits are built right into it. So when they open those raw files, they don't have to see that you missed the exposure or you know that your colors were off. It's all built right into it. So. Definitely, if you're importing into Lightroom, consider doing DNGs as opposed to just copying over as your camera raws. Hopefully this tip was useful. Again, guys, my name is Trevor Daly. If you have any questions or anything I can help you with, holler at me. And I'm recording these tips daily, so be sure to check back often. Thanks so much, guys. Take care. Bye.